When X-rays strike our body cells, their short wavelength enables them to ionize the cells. This ionization disturbs the DNA within the cells, which serves as the blueprint of our body. As a result, the affected cells may become uncontrolled, leading to either cell death or rapid mutations. These mutations can result in the formation of tumors, potentially giving rise to conditions such as cancer. A CT scan machine is essentially a rotating X-ray device capable of collecting thousands of X-ray samples in less than a second to create a 3D image. For example, consider a patient with a blood clot in the head that needs to be located. Generally, X-rays show only the structure of bones. But to clearly visualize blood vessels or soft tissues, a contrast agent is injected into the patient's bloodstream. This contrast agent spreads throughout the body and helps produce a detailed and clear image. The patient lies on a motor control table that slides forward during the scanning process. The large donut-shaped structure you see is the CT scan machine, which stands for computer tomography. Inside the machine, there is an X-ray emitter on one side that generates and emits X-rays, while on the opposite side a detector receives these rays. Let us delve into the details of the X-ray emitter. The X-ray emitter is housed in a glass tube with a vacuum inside. At one end of the tube is the cathode, and on the other end is the anode. A filament is attached to the cathode. When electrical power is supplied, the filament heats up, generating heat around it. On the cathode side, the voltage is initially increased to 30 kV, or kV. This high voltage initiates thermionic emission in the filament, causing electrons to be released. These electrons are then forced to travel through the vacuum. When the voltage is further increased to 150 kV, the electrons accelerate to very high speeds. Thanks to the vacuum inside the tube, the electrons encounter no resistance and travel rapidly toward the anode. A high-voltage DC supply is used at the cathode to ensure a continuous flow of electrons. Why isn't AC supply used? Share your thoughts in the comment box. At the anode, there is a disc, typically made of tungsten or molybdenum. When high-speed electrons collide with this disc, X-rays are generated. The anode's primary function is to decelerate the incoming high-speed electrons to achieve this. Energy is extracted from the electrons, allowing them to slow down. This process can be likened to everyday situations such as an angry child who, unable to express anger toward an elder, looks for someone at their own level to vent their frustration. Similarly, the anode helps balance the high energy levels of the electrons. When electrons strike the anode, part of their energy is released as X-rays, while the remaining energy is converted into heat by the anode. Interestingly, only 1% of the electron's energy is converted into X-rays, while the remaining 99% is transformed into heat. Managing this intense heat is crucial, as even the strongest anode material could melt under such conditions. To manage the heat, a motor is installed behind the anode rod, causing the anode to rotate. As the anode rotates, the heat generated spreads across the entire surface of the disk, helping to dissipate the heat to some extent. However, this alone is not sufficient to fully control the heat. To enhance the quality of the CT scan, certain modifications are made. Dipole magnets are installed along the path of the electrons to force them effectively. Additionally, when electrons strike the anode, some may scatter in different directions. These stray electrons are captured by a scattered electron trap, which improves the image quality and reduces noise significantly. To further manage the heat generated at the anode, water cooling or oil cooling systems are employed. The X-rays emitted from the anode disk are directly through a collimator, which focuses the rays onto a specific area. In a CT scan, the X-rays are focused into extremely thin slices, the purpose of which will be explained later. It is important to note that X-rays are a type of light wave, but they are invisible to the human eye, due to their extremely short wavelength, which allows them to penetrate through the body with ease. Now, let's discuss the scanning process. For instance, if a patient has a blood clot in their head, the CT scan machine does not scan the entire head at once. Instead, it creates small slices of the head, ranging from 1 mm to 10 mm in thickness. For example, the X-rays first focus on a specific area, referred to as slice number 1. 
The machine then scans this slice by rotating around the patient's head. During the rotation, multiple samples are captured, and the machine's computer system continuously collects this data. The X-rays interact with different parts of the body based on their density. For example, bones have a high density, preventing most X-rays from passing through them. Similarly, the density of a blood clot in the brain is higher than that of normal blood flowing in the body. As a result, only a small fraction of the X-rays can pass through the clot, while the rest are absorbed by it. When a contrast agent is injected into the body, it prevents the X-rays from passing through the blood clot. The contrast agent absorbs the X-rays, blocking their further passage. The X-rays that cross the brain are detected by the detector on the opposite side. This detector captures the X-rays and converts them into electrical signals. The CT scan detector is arranged in a horizontal and vertical grid pattern, allowing it to analyze the intensity of the X-rays at different points, identifying areas of strong and weak radiation. Essentially, the detector captures the shadow created by the X-rays, let me explain this with a simple example. Imagine an object whose shape is unknown. If a light source is placed on one side of the object and a wall on the opposite side, the shadow of the object will appear on the wall, allowing us to infer its shape. This process is similar to a normal X-ray. However, in a CT scan, the light source and wall rotate around the object at high speed. This rotation allows the light to capture the object from every angle and the wall records its shadow from all perspectives. This process enables the creation of a detailed 3D view of the object from all sides. Once a slice is scanned, the patient's table moves slightly forward to position the next slice for scanning. By scanning each slice, one at a time, the machine creates a complete 3D image of the area. The rotating part of the CT scan machine is called the gantry. Its rotation speed ranges from 0.25 to 1 second per rotation. Modern CT scan machines rotate at much higher speeds and can capture multiple slices simultaneously. Here's a question for you. How does this machine transmit data while rotating at such high speed, considering the risk of wire breakage? Wi-Fi or Bluetooth isn't used here, so think about it. The answer will be revealed at the end of the video. A CT scan takes only one to two minutes to scan the entire brain. But let's explore what happens to our body cells during this short time. Here we see a healthy body cell functioning normally. As mentioned earlier, X-ray photons possess extremely high energy and very short wavelengths ranging from 0.01 nanometers to 10 nanometers. Electrons are present near our body cells. When X-rays hit a cell, the electrons attempt to resist the incoming energy. However, if the X-ray photon has higher energy, it ejects the electron from the cell, causing the cell to become ionized. The ejected electron becomes free and may interact with nearby cells, disturbing the overall balance of the ionized cell. Inside every cell lies DNA, the blueprint of our body. Once the cell is ionized, the DNA's stored information starts getting corrupted. Due to the high energy, the affected cell may either die completely or undergo uncontrolled mutation if it survives. These mutations can lead to the formation of tumors or severe diseases like cancer, which result from the uncontrolled behavior of mutated cells. Similarly, X-rays also ionize water molecules within the body, making them highly reactive. These reactive water molecules can damage DNA, proteins, and other cellular components. At this point, you might be wondering whether it's safe to undergo X-rays or CT scans. While it's true that X-rays and CT scans have short-term side effects, it's important to consider certain key factors to understand their safety. Radiation from X-rays is measured in units called millisieverts or MSV. On average, a person is exposed to approximately 3 millisieverts of radiation annually from natural sources such as cosmic rays and radon gas. In CT scans and general X-rays, the radiation is administered in a controlled manner. For example, a single chest X-ray delivers a dose of about 0.1 MSV, while in the chest scene, a 7 MSV dose is used. 
This radiation level may vary depending on the body part being scanned. In both cases, the radiation is carefully regulated to ensure it doesn't cause significant harm to the body. It's worth noting that the amount of radiation our body receives in a single scan is equivalent to what we naturally receive over an entire year, but delivered within milliseconds. This can cause minor damage to some cells, but the body typically repairs this damage within a few hours to a few days. The dose is kept low enough to avoid causing any permanent defects. Now let's answer the earlier question. To rotate the gantry, a motor is installed at the base, which drives the rotation using a belt and pulley mechanism. In some machines, a ring and pinion gear system is used instead. Additionally, multiple slip rings are incorporated to facilitate data collection. As the gantry rotates, carbon brushes ensure continuous data transfer from the gantry and also supply power to the X-ray tube. I hope you now have a clear understanding of how CT scans and X-rays work. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Additionally, you can support us by joining our channel membership. Thank you for watching.